of time for Media Watch. Now James Creedon is with us in the studio. And James, hey, uh, going back to our top story this hour, dozens of Holocaust survivors from all around the world mm. uh, gather today at the site of the uh, Auschwitz-Birkenau death camp, which was liberated 75 years mm. ago today. We heard some really... Uh, heart-rending uh, testimony today, didn't we? We absolutely did. And um, I suppose to look at it through social media, a lot of those uh, stories from the survivors uh, are, have been shared on social media in the last uh, week or so. Indeed, on our own uh, Facebook page, uh, Esther sent to Auschwitz at 15 years of age. Her, her account is being shared. But of course, the question is being asked, as this generation now uh, die out, uh, um, how can the memory continue to be transmitted? Now, there's one statistic here in France that one in five people have not heard of uh, the Holocaust, which seems extraordinary given that it's taught in every school uh, in France. But uh, the memory for some is not, um, it's not hitting home. And perhaps it's because you know, a lot of people nowadays are on social media all of the time and perhaps exposed to information a little bit differently and more distracted from uh, the, the lessons of history and whatnot. This is a photo of a young Israeli director called Maya Kochavi. Now, this isn't an altogether new project. It happened sometime last year. But she set up an Instagram page, uh, 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 Eva Stories. Now, Eva was Eva Heyman. She was a Hungarian. Uh, I'll show you that the, there's a YouTube video here that kind of sums up the idea. So via Instagram Stories, well, that's not it. <laughs> that's definitely not it. It moved on. There you go. But in any case... Um, what happened is Eva Heyman, she was Hungarian, she was sent to, mm. to one of the death camps uh, and um, she wrote a diary and this diary is now being serialised and enacted. Uh, she via... turned it into an Instagram story. Exactly. If, uh, that young girl would do if she was alive today. Exactly. And so what's interesting is uh, you have the costumes and all of that uh, and the, the, the true, the, re the reality of that story that mm. is a real story. Uh, uh, so it's filmed uh, as a period piece, if you like, but with all of the codes and the stylistic elements that you have in the use of social media and whatnot nowadays. Uh, even the shaky kind of camera stuff and talking to the camera is selfie style. It's very style. chilling, isn't it? It's very powerful. And you see, this is a way of reaching, uh, I suppose, in, in particular, pre-adolescent, adolescent, uh, young people who, who maybe don't go to the cinema quite as often. Um, and it's got 1.4 uh, million followers on uh, on uh, on Instagram. Okay. Now, some have asked the question, though, is this the dumbing down of history? Uh that there has been a debate and uh, various historians feeling that this is a cheapening uh, of, of the story, uh, it's a dumbing down of the story. But I suppose you could also argue that um, if a lot of young people nowadays are spending a whole lot of time uh, on their devices... Well, it's today's on, medium, isn't it? It's today's right. way of communicating. It's adapting the transmission of memory, I, I, I would keeping say. keeping the stories alive, isn't it? Exactly. Now, uh, you see, it's easy to criticise, I suppose, social media when it comes to the transmission of memory because even within the last year. Do you remember these uh, photos, Laura? This was a story yeah, that we would have spoken about. And so you had people visiting... Lack uh, of self-awareness. Uh, somewhat. Around. Being a little bit self-absorbed. Mm. Uh, social media does tend to do that as well. It has its pitfalls. So... Uh, uh, Auschwitz Memorial actually tweeted this sometime last year saying, please respect the memory of this place. There are better places to learn how to walk on a balance beam than the site which symbolises uh, mm. deportation of hundreds of thousands to their deaths. So those sort of images, uh, people just, I suppose, being a little bit unconscious, unaware and at, at worst, very disrespectful. Uh, but uh, in, 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 in the, um, one of the um, people who was drawing attention to this uh, at the time uh, did, this is a, a Powell Sawiki, who is uh, the mm -hmm. press representative at Auschwitz, he said, look, some people are taking a selfie, but actually saying something and uh, of respect and of note. So it's not always the case that people no, taking selfies are being No, of course not. I mean, people do take selfies. That's just a fact of life. That's what people do these days, isn't it? Exactly. But it's just when you're doing tricks and trying That's to be it. clever, it's a... That's Something it. Else. So you could, it's understandable mm. then why people would feel, oh, serialise, serialising the story via social media, uh, is this the best way to ensure uh, the respectful transmission of memory? Perhaps not. Now, just I'll finish with one um, one uh, little interesting element that I, I was found while going through uh, Twitter today. Victor Frankl, he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. He himself was a Holocaust survivor. Mm. Uh, he... he he wrote this book um, before, during, and indeed after uh, his experience in the death camps, and it's it's one it's it's one of the top ten most influential books today, still in the oh. in the US, for example. Uh, real wisdom having come out of this. Everything can be taken from a man, but one thing 
the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. So uh, I suppose this is also a, a way of ensuring that the transmission of memory uh, remains intact. Great works of, uh, of writing yeah, that will continue so to sell. And so quotes from Victor Frankl have been going up in the last uh, couple of days as well on social media. Life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. Obviously, that's much more fleshed out in his book, but uh, great wisdom from those who emerged from the horrors of the death camps. Thank you very much, James, for being there.